how Google became what it is today. When you don't understand a certain thing, or when you don't know the answer to a certain question, what do you do? You most certainly pull up your phone and in a few taps, you have your answer. Or to be more exact, you have about 2 billion answers to your question in the palm of your hand. But who makes the search for you? And who pulls out the information to your screen? Probably Google, the biggest search engine in the world, making 3.5 billion searches a day. In this video, we will dig deeper into the company Google and how it rose to be the biggest search engine in the world. The beginning. In January 1996, Larry Page and Sergey Brin started Google as a research project when they were both PhD students at Stanford University in Stanford, California. Back in the day, search engines ranked results by counting how many times the search terms appeared on the page. But Larry and Sergey theorized about a better system that analyzed the relationships among websites. They named the technology PageRank. PageRank determined a website's relevance by the number of pages and the importance of those pages that linked back to the original site. Because the system checked backlinks to estimate the importance of a site, the two founders originally nicknamed the new search engine Backrub. But as time passed, they changed the name to Google. The name came from a misspelling of Google. The domain name for Google was registered on September the 15th, 1997, and the company was incorporated on September the 4th, 1998. It was based in the garage of a fellow PhD student at Stanford named Susan Wojcicki, also known as the CEO of YouTube, in Menlo Park, California. Finances and internal public offering. In August 1998, Andy Bechtelsim, co-founder of Sun Microsystems, invested 100,000 US dollars in Google. The company also received money from three other angel investors. The three other investors were Amazon.com founder Jeff Bezos, Stanford University computer science professor David Cheriton, and entrepreneur Ram Sriram. On June 7, 1999, the company got another 25 million US dollars in funding by major investors, including the venture capital firms Kleiner Perkins, Clawfield & Bynes, and Sequoia Capital. Bryn and Page decided they wanted to sell Google in early 1999 to Excite, so they went to Excite's CEO George Bell and offered to sell the company for 1 million US dollars. George rejected the offer. One of Excite's venture capitalists, Vinod Kolsa, talked down the price to 750,000 US dollars, but Bell still rejected it. Five years later, on August 19, 2004, Google's initial public offering, IPO, took place. At that time, Larry Page, Sergey Brin, and Eric Schmidt agreed to work together on Google until the year of 2024. At the IPO, Google offered 19,605,052 shares at a price of 85 US dollars per share. They were sold at an online auction. 1.67 billion US dollars in sale gave Google a marketing capitalization of more than 23 billion US dollars and by January 2014, its market capitalization had grown to 397 billion US dollars. 271 million shares remained under the control of Google, and many of the company's employees became instant paper millionaires. After the IPO, the stock performed well, hitting 350 US dollars the first time in October 31, 2007, primarily because of strong sales and earnings in the online advertising market. Google is listed on the NASDAQ stock exchange under the ticker symbols GOOGI and GOOG. Growth March 1999, Google moved its offices to Palo Alto, California, which is the home for several technology startups. The following year, the company started selling advertisements associated with search keywords, and in order to maintain an uncluttered page design, advertisements were solely text-based. In 2003, after outgrowing two other locations, the company decided to lease an office complex from Silicon Graphics. At 1600 Amphitheater Parkway in Mountain View, California, the complex is now known as the Googleplex. The Googleplex interiors were designed by Clive Wilkinson Architects, and three years later, Google bought the property from SGI for 319 million US dollars. The word Google had by this time found its way into everyday language. 
causing the verb Google to be added to the Merriam-Webster Collegiate Dictionary and the Oxford English Dictionary, denoted as to use the Google search engine to obtain information on the internet. And the first use of Google as a verb in pop culture happened on TV series Buffy the Vampire Slayer in 2002. Have you Googled her yet? Thanks to large companies shifting their advertising strategies from newspapers, magazines and television to the internet, Google's third quarter profit increased with 700% in 2005, and in January 2008, 20 petabytes of data per day passed through Google's MapReduce software component. 2012 was the first year that Google generated 50 billion US dollars in annual revenue, which topped the 38 billion US dollars that was generated the previous year. In 2016, Google celebrated its 18th birthday with an animated doodle shown on the web browser around the world. At the engineering conference in September 2015, Google's engineering manager, Rachel Potvin, revealed that the entire Google code base, which spans every single service it develops, consists of over 2 billion lines of code, and all the code is stored on a code repository, available to all 25,000 Google engineers. The code is regularly copied and updated on 10 Google data centers, and to keep control, Potvin said Google had to build its own version control system, called Piper. And when a Google engineer wants to start a new project, they have a wealth of libraries available to them, because almost everything has been done. As of October 2016, Google operates in more than 40 countries, with 70 offices. A company named Alexa that monitors commercial web traffic lists Google.com as the most visited website in the world, and several other Google services are also listed in the top 100 most visited websites, like for example, YouTube. And now you know the story about the most used search engine in the world and how it rose to being where it is today. We hope that you found this video interesting and if you liked it and enjoy our content, please subscribe to the channel and click on the notification bar so you don't miss any of our new videos. You can also follow us on Instagram, Facebook and Twitter so that you can get an insight on how we make our videos. Links are down at the description.